I'm Gerald Melberg. We are standing in my gallery in the middle of what I believe to be one of the most important exhibitions I've ever had the privilege of uh, presenting here in Charlotte. We are exhibiting about 30 works by the internationally known artist Wolf Kahn. But this is a very special show because it is works from between 1950 and 1970. Uh, I have been uh, for quite some time trying to convince Wolf to allow me to exhibit these works and I, I guess I finally wore him down and uh, we are all the better for it. Uh, I'm pleased to say that Wolf is with me today and we're going to do a couple of things. He's going to spend a little time walking around the exhibition and talking about some of these particular paintings. The show includes works from primarily uh, two bodies of works, one from the early days on his extended honeymoon in Italy with his artist wife, Emily Mason. And the second body of work is from uh, his first studio in the United States, which was in Stonington, Maine. Uh, so with that introduction, I'd like to ask Wolf to come and join me and uh, we'll start roaming around the gallery a little bit. Okay, this um, uh, painting here is of the entrance to the garden of the house next door to where we lived on the Judeca in Venice in 1957. And it had a big uh, uh, hydrangea, not hydrangea, what, what do they call that, that flower that he, that's uh, a purple and hangs. Uh, um, a lilac wool? No, 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 it's a hanging. Wisteria. Huh? Wisteria vine. Yeah, and it, it just, just keep, kept going. And I was, as you can see very clearly, I was very much in love with Van Gogh. <laughs> and I think this Italian garden painting is the same year, is it Same not? year, same garden, actually seen from a different, different viewpoint. Yeah. And um, uh, we got to be friends with the gardener who would give us flowers for our house. And um, when it came time, he also had a, a, a line of, of, of grapevine, uh, grapevines going. And when it came time to make the wine, he allowed me to tread the, uh, trample out the vin vintage, uh, for which I had to hold on to some wires and take my shoes off, of course. And then uh, 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 the, uh, the uh, exhalations from, from the wine slowly being created there by my dirty souls and the uh, 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 grapes made me drunk. Uh, I didn't know that you could get drunk from treading out the vintage. Do you think that having the purple feet then led anything toward the uh, purple ties that you wear now? I don't know. Who knows? Uh, but anyway, this, this is the window from, from our um, uh, apartment where we lived in the palazzo next door. And it was, was a lovely time. I'd just been married uh, at that point eight months. And uh, I was, I'd had a, a successful show in New York, my first uptown show. And I was trying to uh, continue the thread of my painting in New York, but everything changed when I changed locale and, and, and lifestyle and I became a second-hand Van Gogh. But on the other hand, I must say, uh, I look at those paintings, all of my paintings from that early period, and it seems to me that I was unduly worried about being halfway decent painter because they look very good to me now, you know? I mean, they're not wonderful, but they're good, you know? Good early work. So um, uh, I, I'm, I'm not at all ashamed to, to ha have them exhibited. Uh, even though they show me at a uh, unripe state, if not to say half-baked state. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we found out that if you lived in Venice in the winter time, you ran in great danger of having con constant respiratory ailments because it was so damp and and. Uh, uh, so we moved to, to more, more uh, further south in Italy, to Spoleto. And uh, there I painted uh, the, the, the hill Spoleto with the castle way on top. 
here's the castle, and the, and the cathedral of Spoleto is the church, the Duomo, is on the, on the rise of, of this hill. Still sits there, but now they have a hole through this hill and a tunnel for the cars to go through. So it's, it's a historical painting, no longer corresponds to what's really there. But although I wish I, there were a tunnel, because this looks a little empty to me. A tunnel would be good there, you know. <laughs> but this is about as far toward, toward uh, traditional expressionism as, as, I've ever, ever, as I've ever gone. Let's talk about the two um, Tiber River paintings. Well, those are much later. Yes. Yeah, a good deal later. No, in fact, uh, those were done in uh, 63, 64. But in between, I was on, uh, on Martha's Vineyard. And my, my style and, and color, particularly, totally changed. And uh, I started painting these kind of almost monochromatic paintings. And uh, I think... So this Cypress Row is from Martha's Vineyard? Yeah. No, actually, wait a minute. It's probably... It, no, no, that, that belongs to this series That's of what paintings. I thought. That's yeah. why I... No, but this, this is from Martha's Vineyard. This painting in here. This painting is, and these boat paintings are. That's 50, I think. Um, the sailboat paintings? Yeah. Uh, these are mid 60s, 67. Oh, really? Uh -huh. Oh, no, then, then I've, got, I've got my own itinerary and through life quite wrong. <laughs> yeah, and that's, that's what I next, uh, we moved to, to Martha's Vineyard and uh, <clears throat> in the summertime, and I got involved in sailboats. Um, Did you sail yourself? Well, I didn't say I was taken on, on board a sailboat and uh, taught to duck my head when the boom comes swinging around. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the, the man who took me out, uh, um, he, he, what did he say, ready about? Um, I, I don't know, I don't know yeah. sailing language. Yeah, so. anyway. Hardalay. Let, uh, ready about hard delay, that's what, it, what, what they say when the anchor, when the boom comes swinging around. But I never uh, really got passionate about sailing, but I did like the idea of those boats on the water, you know. Yeah. Well, and the, these are very subtle paintings. And, you know, some of the, some of the titles even, you know, indicate that. Like this one yeah. over here, I believe it's a, you know, the, the sailboat in the fog, those sorts of things yeah. that, that you added to the title. Yeah, and this, boat, this little painting here is probably the hardest work that painting I ever made. Yeah, as you can see, it's like heavy, heavy, heavy paint. Um, I probably on a little painting like that, I imagine I must have put in maybe 60 hours of painting. Oh my goodness. Yeah, because I, at that time I had a very small baby and uh, I was babysitting, so my wife could li have a life of her own. And I spent all my time on very small paintings. There's this one, and then there's the one in here. Yes, these two. Yeah, both of these pictures are from, from that period, see? And I wasn't afraid of using a lot of paint. In fact, I had to use a lot of paint because I kept making mistakes. You know. When you do it wrong and you paint over it, after a while it gets to be very gloppy. This is the woods, and this is again in uh, two, I think three trees. Just. Yeah, and I think, I think, well, they're very complete. They have well, all, all the and information. Another thing, another thing that was about then, it was uh, the period of minimalism. You know, Certainly. the less you put into a painting, the better you felt about it. Yeah.